morning, Tyler. Welcome to Coffee with Podge. Time for our simultaneous sip. So today our topic is going to be decision making. So you are faced with a million decisions. What sorority to rush, who to be friends with, what classes to take, which teachers to take those classes with, what to major in. <clears throat> and I want you to think back to all the decisions that you've ever had to make in your life, especially the decisions that you thought were difficult decisions. And I bet if you were to look at most of those decisions, while they might have seemed excruciating at the time, um, in hindsight, you actually, when you look at it, you actually realize the decision was relatively straightforward. And so you have to be able to separate uh, the emotional aspect and the intellectual aspect of making your decisions. Because intellectually, you almost always know what the right thing to do is, but your emotions get in the way. And it's one of the single biggest mistakes people make about decision making in general. People believe they make decisions rationally. Most people make most of their decisions emotionally. And that's okay, but if you're not aware of that, uh, it really can sort of bite you in the, bite you in the butt. So uh, a couple of things I wanna talk about in terms of decision making. The first one is the idea of sunk costs. So there's actually very few things in business school that I learned that were of much value. But one thing I did learn that was incredibly useful is that you always should ignore sunk costs in making your decision. So let's say for instance, you're in you know, college for two years and you're a psych major and you absolutely hate it. And so now you're going into your junior year and you realize that uh, if you change majors now, you're not going to graduate on time. Well, but you already know you hate being a psychology major. So if you take some costs into account, you might say, you know what? I'm just going to tough it out, finish my degree, graduate on time, get a degree in four years, even though I know I hate psychology. Or you can say, you know what? Those two years, those are a sunk cost. Yeah, I can only transfer some of my credits. But I'm going to graduate six months late, but I'm going to change my major to sociology or political science or whatever, something that you know you really enjoy. So that to me is a no-brainer. Yet, if you're considering sunk costs, you stay as a psych major. You ignore sunk costs, maybe you change to political science or communications or whatever. So the other thing um, I wanted you to think about is... There's a, now, now that you actually are a psychology major, you're going to learn about something called confirmation bias. This is an incredibly important psychological concept that uh, you have no idea how much it affects uh, your decision making. So I'm going to tell you something that sort of, sort of shows you how that works. You know when you like, uh, you're thinking about getting a new car or a new set of boots, or new dress, whatever it might be. And now that you've thought about getting that car, or that pair of boots, or that dress, you see them everywhere. Before, it seemed like you never saw them. Now it seems like every other person you see is driving that car, wearing those boots, or uh, wearing that dress. And so, that's kind of a form of confirmation bias. Your, your mind is primed for something, and now you see it everywhere you go. Same thing's true when like you're reading a book or you're in a lecture and you hear a word for the first time that you don't know the definition of, and you'd swear you've never heard that word before a day in your life, and yet now it seems like every other conversation you're in, that word is being used. Same kind of thing. So, but what's insidious is once we come to a decision, where we're leaning towards a decision, and you become emotionally invested in that decision, you are, you are vulnerable, really vulnerable to confirmation bias. And I want you to steel yourself against that. So you're pledging a sorority, that's a sorority you really want to go into because that's where the cool kids are, whatever it might be. What's gonna happen is you're going to, let's say you meet some people in that sorority and they behave badly, you know, ignore that because that does not tie to the narrative that you want to be thinking, which is this is a sorority that I want to be in and I want to like the people that I'm with. Alternatively, if someone does some 
good thing you're gonna blow that up to be bigger than it is because that's supporting the conclusion you already have, which is I wanna thank these people in this sorority are good people. And so just be careful that you're, you're taking a step back, trying your level best to be objective, and then making a decision. Keeping your eye out about ignoring sunk costs and trying to avoid confirmation bias. Anyway, I hope you have a great day of school after this Labor Day holiday. I love you and miss you. Simultaneous sip.